Welcome back to Fireside Knicks. I'm Bryce Gelman. I'm joined by my co-host, Brett Hamfling. And today, we're pleased to be welcomed by one of the best personalities in sports media and someone I'm lucky enough to call a friend, Mr. John Dostremski, host of the New York, New York podcast for The Ringer on Spotify. JJ, how are you, man? Uh, I love the kind introduction. Thank you, number one. Bryce, a pleasure. Brett, good to be with you. Um, I guess I have good timing, guys. We're taping this on Tuesday. I think the Knicks had one of, if not their best win of the regular season. All is well in Nickland. Uh, and let's have some fun here. Let's do it. Yeah, uh, John, I appreciate you coming on. And for those who don't know, John is one of the best voices in New York sports. Um, kind of has a common man feel while somehow catering to the diehard fan. Um, he's always putting out content, but seemingly loving every minute of it. Um, so real briefly before we get into the Knicks, can you tell us quickly all the things you do and kind of how you got here in, a, in sort of a abbreviated version? Man, I do way too many things these days. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just – so I do two podcasts at the Ringer. I do my New York, New York special, which I'm sure is tailor-made to anybody who is a New York sports fan. We go three days a week. Uh, we'll have a pod dropping. We'll actually – do a Twitter spaces on Wednesday and post it as a podcast after Nick's nets and mix in a couple of things there. But you want to find that on the ringer, uh, me on Twitter, John underscore Jastrzemski. And then you could watch me basically every night on television. I look a lot better on TV. I promise that than I do right now, but, uh, five nights a week on Honda sports night on SNY at 11 o'clock. Uh, I do baseball night in New York. I'll be on later on tonight. We're taping this on Tuesday, February the 28th. I'll be on at six. Uh, and honestly, if you just check my Twitter page, you'll know what's going on. Like follow me on the Spotify, on the uh, Apple podcast and all that stuff. But we always, you know, tweet out what we need to tweet out from a content standpoint. And yeah, it was a eight, nine year, I don't even know, 10 year run in radio. Uh, and now we've moved into a new space plus an old school space. So you know, new media, old media, we're all over the place, guys. That's what we do around here. We're everywhere. There we go. But, uh, yeah, I just recently followed you on Spotify Live. I got to get more into that. Well, I, I was going to say, now we are taking – you're a little too late to the party. We're moving <laughs> no. those shows. We always would post them as podcasts anyway, Bryce, but we are now going to move those to Twitter spaces because – when you have, and I don't want to brag here, but like you the amount of followers you've got, well, listen, got when you have, AJ. well, here's what it boils down to. When you have 40 some thousand Twitter followers, we could start taking these shows on Twitter. And I feel like we're going to have so many more people that we could reach out to. So, yeah. uh, you know, they got that space, no pun intended, figured out. So uh, we're trying our first one Wednesday. So uh, that's, that's the grand plan as far as that goes, but I'll take calls. We'll have a ton of fun with that. And away we go. Beautiful. I'll be sure to delete my Spotify live app. Uh, no no need for that anymore. I was going to say, right. regular Spotify app you need, though, because when yes. you want to download it as a podcast, we well, got to keep those Spotify numbers guy. strong. There you I'm go. a Spotify guy. I mean, so how can I'm you not, not be? Listen, not to, not to stroke the company, but I mean, my goodness, the, the interface between them and Apple as far as podcasts, it's, you know, it's not even not close. Even close. Not even close. Agreed on that. All right, JJ, let's get into what you came here for. Some Knicks talk. So huge, huge night last night for the Knicks. Beat Boston, the best record in the league, 109 to 94. Josh Hart playing out of his mind. Let me ask you this. Speaking in like general terms, like what is your biggest takeaway this far into the season for anything? Um, that's a good question. The Knicks are better than I thought they were. How's that for a takeaway? Let's start. <laughs> I thought the there Knicks go. going into the year would be better than what they were last year. I thought they'd be right around a 500 team. I thought Jalen Brunson would absolutely help. But I kind of looked at the infrastructure of the Eastern Conference. I'm thinking about how things are going to play out. And I'm like, all right, maybe they're in the plan. Maybe they're not. But around a 500 team. They're better than that. And Randall's been much better than I thought he would be. Barrett has been worse, quite frankly, than I thought he would be. But it starts to me with Brunson. Brunson... I always liked him as a player. Guys, I watch a lot of college basketball, as you know. He was always a gamer at Villanova. He was always a <clears throat> sort of glue guy at Villanova. But he really came on the scene last year, stepped up when Luca got hurt, got the big contract. I'm like, all right, is he worth that money? He's worth that and then some. He's been so good for this team. Uh, they play hard. I think they're guys that simply put, 
give a shit. Like, I, I do think there's something to be said for that. Like, when you look around the NBA and getting that sort of motivation on a night-in, night-out basis, the Knicks give a shit. They play hard consistently, night after night after night. I think you want to credit the DNA of the players on this team. I also think you got to credit the head coach for that because in this era of load management and taking nights off and mailing it in, Knicks don't mail in games. They play really, really hard. So grand takeaway, Knicks are better than I thought. There you go. Yeah, I mean, when you insert Jalen Brunson, who is an all-star, he didn't make the all-star game, but he's good enough to be an all-star. Um, he's unlocked something in Julius Randle or Julius Randle just said, Hey, I don't want my, you know, to have a one season wonder career. Um, he maybe unlocked something in, in himself. And then you have Emmanuel quickly, who I just can't say enough good things about. I thought he was awesome last night. Scored 23 points. Talk about give a shit. He gives a shit. Talk about build for the moment. He loves the garden. And the other thing is like last night was a big game. You're battling to, you know, be in the top four or five. Um, you're playing Boston, and, and they rose to the occasion. There was this extra juice in the air. You saw it from Quickly. You saw it from Mitch. You saw it from Grimes. Like, Randall and Brunson didn't even have great games. Um, RJ had a terrible game, and you beat the best record in, in, in the league. So um, a lot of great takeaways from last night. Yeah, just, and, you know, I just mentioned this. I did a gambling pot a few minutes ago, guys. The Quickly sixth man of the year odds are way too high. Too low. Or two, well, maybe, what are they, what are they right too now? high, however you want what to you look mean? at yeah. it. He should be at least 10 to 1 to win the award. And what, what look, I don't think I don't think he's gonna win it. I think probably Brogdon or Powell is gonna win it, but man, quickly look at what he's done but over still, the last two yeah. months. He's played great. The impact that he has in the court is just immeasurable. And I don't think that the gambling lines are gonna reflect that. I personally I think he should win the award, but obviously there may be a little Knicks bias in that, but he has proven himself on a nightly basis. I think what he offers you, and obviously the, the new addition, everyone's going to want to talk about him, Josh Hart. The two of them together, they're going to give it all the time. They're just going to give their all constantly each game. And I think that that's given a, a new face to this this team. And I'm, I'm going to use that as a little segue here. How do we feel about this Josh Hart acquisition? Because the Knicks are 6-0 and since they traded for Josh Hart, and he's done some great things on the court. He's a badass, guys. He plays hard. He brings a lot of intangibles that are tough to measure in statistics. Um, the way he gets after it, the way he can kind of get in an opponent's head. I mean, the guy's a winning player. He was a winning player in college. He's had moments where he's been a real good role player in the NBA. And that was a real good, smart, terrific trade by Leon Rose. And I've been critical of this GM at times. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but to go and Say goodbye to Cam Reddish, who had no role on the team. They got a zillion first-round picks anyway. whoop de doo And go get a guy who's had an immediate impact. Josh Hart has had an immediate impact. And I know it was more Randall on that foul with Tatum, but you could see the way he was chirping at mm -hmm. Tatum at the end of the game. Like, mm -hmm. he, he plays to the crowd. He's perfect for coming off the bench. And I, I'd argue at this point in time, guys, when the Knicks are closing out games, forget about who starts games. That's, that's overblown. Who cares? the end of these games josh hart is a bad is a part of your best five mm -hmm. he's a part of your he's best right. five and that might mean rj barrett's gonna lose some minutes so be it uh josh hart was a terrific terrific pickup from this team yeah that might be a, a rude awakening because you know as bad as rj's been and we've talked about this all, all year on this pod he's still been coddled by tibbs He's, you know, his minutes haven't really got cut just in the last couple of days a little bit but before that he still has finished a lot of games I don't know if he's ready. I mean, he should be. He sees the writing on the wall. Quickly, he's playing great, and Josh Hart is a glue guy. I don't know, JJ. Do you are do you think that this could create this negative sort of impact if he pouts on the bench, or I don't know, is he ready to not play in in crucial minutes of? of well, he's got to earn it. Listen, Brett, that's what it boils down to. He's got to earn it. Look, RJ Barrett last year played really well. Um, this year, he has not been as effective. I know. Some people are going to look at the numbers and say, yeah, his points per game are similar. You know, his rebounds and assists Bears. are similar. Watch the games. The guy's been way yeah. more inefficient. He's not gotten better. His outside shot is horrific. He's turning the ball over way too much. He's Ugly forcing turnovers. the issue way too much. And his defense hasn't been as good. So you add all of that up, R.J. Barrett hasn't been as effective for the New York Knicks. Um, 
I don't worry about that because I think he's a good guy. So he does not strike me as the guy that's going to be me, 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 throw a temper tantrum, throw a fit, um, go and play better. I, I think that's what it boils down to. And look, he's going to be given opportunities. It, it's not like he's going into witness protection like Fournier where he's not going to play. But I think in order to earn crunch time minutes, he's got to go and give you crunch time production. Mm-hmm. Let's see if that changes over the next couple of weeks. Next, I have a lot more big games coming up. So exactly. let's see if that changes. And he's he's gotten minutes. Like, he, he gets minutes each game. And I, I think him not getting minutes at the end of games is more of an indication of how he's playing in, in said game. If he's having a good game, he's going to play at the end of each game. But he's not. And since they traded for Josh Hart, he's playing significantly less. He's averaging around 32 minutes per game. He was playing 36, 37. Dibs are just throwing him out constantly no matter what happens. Now that there's competition for that role, a guy who could – you know, Swiss Army knife who could do everything on the court and who feeds into the play of a Julius Randle and a Jalen Brunson. I think, you know, having RJ Barrett in is just it's less attractive now because of how well Josh Hart has really adapted to the play of these guys. Well, it's Hart and it's also Quickly, who you quickly, guys hit yeah. on as well. You can't take Quickly, quickly yeah. has kind of put himself in a position where he's earning those minutes. And why is he earning those minutes? He's playing off the ball. And he's hitting the outside shot. That That is what hard and quickly provide a lot more than R.J. Barrett. You get a little bit more floor space, and that makes a world of difference. Yeah, R.J. needs the ball to be effective. And I think quickly, you know, he's always 100%. He's, he's, he gets the ball. He's running up the court. And I, Josh Hart's the same way. It's, it's transition. It's everything. <coughs> R.J. Barrett needs the ball constantly. He, he can't do it off the ball. I mean, because he's not is- hitting shots, so... The other thing Those is, guys better. he needs the ball. He's he's become a strictly one-on-one player, and he's not a good one-on-one player. He doesn't have – his handle's not tight enough. His, his footwork is good once he kind of pivots and does stuff, but he gets in all these awkward drives where he's looking for a foul. It, I don't want to I don't want to uh, bury R.J. Barrett too much. I think we all kind of feel the same. But he's turning uh, the ball over way too much. Listen, the bottom line is he's got to be better, guys. Like, I, I, I don't think this is like some grand – declaration on what R.J. Barrett is as a player. He's still young. He's still got time to figure that out, obviously. But, I mean, unless you're living under a rock and not paying attention, he's been the element within this next season that I would say would quantify a disappointment. Like, I I don't know how anybody could look at R.J. Barrett's ear and be real with themselves and say, yeah, he's moved and progressed in the right direction. He is not. No way. All right, J.J., who's this at this point of the year? Who's your MVP? Oh, team. my God. This is not even close. Brunson, by a mile. By a mile. I know Randall's having a great statistical season. I, I, I get that. I don't think Randall is having the – let's put it this way. Randall's not having the year he's having if Brunson's not here. I, I think Randall getting to play off the ball, not having to do as much as far as, you know, just the attention. He's dribbling it up. He's. It, it was like the Randall show last year, and it – Became a detriment to the Knicks. Brunson, without hesitation, is this team's MVP by a mile. By a mile. Yeah, I I agree. And it's going to be so interesting um, because, you know, assuming we make the playoffs, hopefully we make the playoffs, he's going to go against against some stars, whether it's Joel Embiid, Donovan Mitchell, you know, Tatum, Giannis. And he's our guy. And and on the surface, you're like, Jalen Brunson's your guy. And, you know, I know people out of New York are, are listening to that and probably don't believe it, but he's been every bit the star that some of those guys, not, you know, obviously not the honest is and Tatum, but um, that those other guys have been. So I'm really excited to see him elevate to elevate to the playoffs and kind of what he could do there. Um, I, Brett, listen, fun. last year in Dallas, he outplayed Donovan Mitchell in a first sure. round series. Let's not forget about that. Luca went down with the injury. Now, I know there were some some factors in play. Utah basically knew they were breaking up that team. Donovan Mitchell, you want to argue, had one foot out the door. Sure, you can make that case. Uh, but Brunson outplayed Donovan Mitchell. They're going to need that to be the case. If we're and, and I know we're looking ahead here, but that's the series the Knicks want. They want a legitimate shot of winning a first-round series. Let's be real about this. They're not beating the Celtics. They're not beating the Bucs. And they're probably not beating the Philadelphia 76ers. Because I don't think, personally, they have an answer for Embiid. I know it's Doc Rivers. They they don't I know it's James Harden. The the Sixers would win that series. Like, the Sixers, 
if we're doing odds on this and I'm doing the way too early, way too premature first round series prices in the NBA, Philly would be minus 270 to 300 if they play the Knicks in a first round wow. series. If it was, they just would. I mean, that it, far, I, I'd say maybe minus two hundred. Like they'd nah, have, no, nah, they'd be higher than that, Bryce. Maybe, I'm, yeah. Bryce, look at the title odds. That that's all you have to do. Yeah, look at the title odds for what Philly is and what the Knicks are, what Cleveland is and what the History. Knicks are, and you could kind of take a, a a a page and a feel on what the odds makers would make that particular series. Um, Cleveland, though, I think would be like minus one fifty. I'm saying if Cleveland is at home and they're playing the Knicks, minus 150, which means the Knicks are legitimately live yeah. and are right there in the series. And I probably would bet the Knicks for the series for what it's worth. So, yeah, that, so, that would be just the whole Donovan Mitchell drama, yeah. not getting him, and then yeah. starting out the season pretty shitty and then playing them the first round. That's what a And let's line. be real, guys. That first Nick cap game kind of turned their season around. I don't know mm-hmm. if you guys remember. They got yes, smoked by Dallas. Everyone thought, and it was kind of under the radar because it was like a football Sunday. Uh, uh, by the way, when the NBA plays games on Sundays, they need to be at seven o'clock or later. Like you cannot play games at noon. Nobody's watching them. Nobody cares. You got to be smarter than that. Um, but this was one of those Sunday night specials. I remember it well. And I and the Knicks ended up winning that game, and it kind of got their season jump started. That was when they won like eight or nine in a row. Yeah. So. They had beaten the Cavs two out of three. Take that for what it's worth. That was the uh, that was the travel game, right? Like RJ Barrett had like seven travels, and um, yes, yes, yeah, you're right yeah. about that. And the Cavs, yeah. the Cavs missed a bunch of threes, but yeah, that kid started the win streak. Um, and it's it saved Dibs' right. job because he could have been yeah. fired after the game. They lost that game by a lot. His wow. job would have could have been in jeopardy. I don't think Leon Rose would have ever fired him, but it it could have you know sparked the conversation even more because I think at that point people I mean, were talking after that about Dallas game. Yeah, that was, that was the yeah. talk. Is Tibbs going to make it to Christmas? I mean, I was getting asked those questions on SOI. And, and, and I'm glad that the Tom Thibodeau hater has kind of taken uh, a silence mm-hmm. pill over the last few weeks. Look, I, I don't want to make Tom Thibodeau out to be um, Red Allerback as a head coach, okay? Like, I understand his flaws. I, I understand his complaint amongst Nick fans that he doesn't play his young players enough. But I always have this takeaway with Tibbs as a coach. He's never had elite level talent ever. Like, all right, you want to tell me? Yeah, Derek he, Rose? He, had, he had the MVP. Well, hold on a second. He had the youngest on, MVP in yeah. NBA history. Yeah, but did he have a team as good as Miami's when they went to the playoffs? No. No, and he also didn't have as good of a team as Boston. So, well, that. But my point is, he's done a good job as an NBA head coach. He did a good job in Chicago. I don't know how anybody could look at that track record and say he did a bad job in Chicago. Min- Derrick Rose Minnesota got hurt. too. Yeah, like Derrick Rose got hurt. Minnesota was in, eh, but like they made the playoffs. Wins, Minnesota, who Minnesota wins doesn't in make Minnesota. the playoffs. Exactly. They don't That's make what the I'm saying. Nobody wins in Minnesota. And <laughs> the Knicks have been, I mean, let's call it like it is, a joke for 20 years. They're on their way to going to the playoffs two to three years. He's been a coach of the team. The guy could coach. Yeah. He's a good yeah. NBA head coach. Let's put it that way. Well, that leads me to one of my last questions as we uh, almost wrap up. You said this is as good of a team as we had, or you didn't say that exactly, but I'll ask you, where does this team rank in the last 20 years? I mean, is it better than that 12-13 team? No, 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 I don't think so. Two. I don't think so. That team won 50-something games. 54, um, yeah. They're I number two team in the East. Here's the difference, though, between this team and that team. I think what they're doing now is more sustainable. Does that make sense? Because they yeah. have a younger team. They have a little bit of a younger nucleus. And I think they can add to it. I think it's a little more sustainable. They're just, and they're 100% deeper. better yeah. than the team two years ago against Atlanta. Yes. They're 100% better than that team because of Jalen Bronson. And they're not starting Reggie Bullock. And, and I mean, listen, you got to give the guy credit, but they had Alfred Payton as their starting point guard. I think that, that says everything you need to know about the difference between these two teams. All right, JJ. We appreciate you hopping on the podcast. You're one of the best. And I uh, hope to do it again soon. For for Brett, I'm Bryce saying goodbye for, for this week's episode of Fireside Knicks. See you guys next time.